The T-72 has so many variants it's tough to keep track. When the Soviet T-72 tank was first deployed, Richard Nixon was president, the F-4 Phantom was America's primary fighter, and the world's steel beasts had yet to discover a nemesis called the wire-guided anti-tank missile. At least 25,000 T-72s have been built, making it the second most prolific post-World War II tank, coming in behind only the ubiquitous T-54 T-55. That the T-72 is still in service today, and still being used by about 45 countries, including Russia, speaks to the longevity of this vehicle. The T-72 began life as a cheaper alternative to the disastrous T-64, a sophisticated mid-1960s tank that proved to be overcomplicated and unreliable. First deployed with the Soviet Army in 1973, the 41-ton T-72 featured a 125mm smoothbore cannon. The cannon was fed by an autoloader instead of a human loader, just like the T-64, enabling the vehicle's crew to be reduced to three, instead of the usual four in modern tanks. However, unlike the T-64, the T-72 didn't try to feed the crew's limbs into the gun. With a rolled homogeneous armor a measure of armor toughness, of about 410 to 500 mm for the cast armor hull and turret, the original T-72 had decent armor protection for an early 1970s tank. However, it also carried ammunition in the crew compartment, rather than a separate, protected space, which increased the risk of a catastrophic explosion when the vehicle was hit. So many damaged T-72s in Iraq blew their turrets off that US troops called them. What's notable about the T-72 is how it has been upgraded over the years, as well as its numerous variants. The T-72A appeared in 1979, with thicker armor. The thickened appearance of the turret frontal armor of the T-72A led to the unofficial US Army nickname, Dolly Parton for this variant, after the buxom American country singer and actress, rights tank expert Steven Zaloga in his book T-72 Main Battle Tank 1974-93. Next came the T-72B in 1985, which incorporated features from the newer T-80. In particular, the T-72B had a laser rangefinder and thicker armor of as much as 560 Ra, with the turret beefed up with composite armor. It was the T-72BI version that really had a well-protected turret. Super Dolly Parton composite armor. The Soviets were particularly concerned with shaped charge shells and rockets. The T-72BIS hull and turret had a remarkable 900 to 950 RA against heat warheads. The T-72B and BI also had the capability to fire missiles from their 125mm cannon. The 9M119 Sver and 9M119M reflex missiles, NATO code name AT-11 Sniper, are two foot long, laser-guided missiles with a range of more than three miles. The T-72B and later models were also equipped with explosive reactive armor, or ERA, to destroy incoming shells before they hit the vehicle. The T-72B2, unveiled in 2006, has advanced relict ERA protection, the Stora-1 jamming system to disrupt missile guidance links, and a more powerful, 1,000 horsepower engine. The latest upgrades, displayed in 2010, is the T-72B3 and B3M intended as a cheaper upgrade than the T-72B2. The B3 program refurbishes old T-72BS with a new engine, better fire control and a more powerful cannon. Unfortunately for T-72 fans, there are numerous homegrown variants developed by non-Russian customers. Among others, Saddam Hussein's Iraq had Lion of Babylon T-72s, Yugoslavia had its M84, India the Ajaya South Africa the T-72 Tiger upgrade package, and Syria the T-72 Adra. There are several thousands T-72s in use around the world. Not surprisingly, the biggest user is still Russia, with about 2,500 in active service, and another 8,000 in reserve. As of September 2016, about 1,000 T-72s have been upgraded into B3 models, according to a Russian defense site. While Russia has 3,500 T-80s, that tank seems to be a dead end. While the T-14 Armada is an intriguing and sophisticated next-generation tank, it seems unlikely that it will be mass-produced enough to become the primary Russian main battle tank anytime soon. Which means that for the foreseeable future, the T-72 will continue to be the backbone of Russia's armor fleet.